Hello, hello, everybody. It's going to be a great day. You know why? Because when you know better, you get better. And that's what we do here every single day. So that is going to make it a great day. Welcome back, Hill Squad. Hope you had a great weekend. Thanks for being with us. If you're new to the show, that is exactly what we do. We know better to get better, to do better every single day. And Bobo, if you're watching on YouTube, is sitting on the couch. Max, if you can see in the reflection of the mirror behind me, is laying behind me. And Winnie is with her Queen Kelsey. So all the dogs are a part of the show today as well. Uh, <laughs> we don't have a quote of the day, Kelsey. Or I don't have a quote of the day, so maybe you have it. Quote of the day. Be nice people, make good choices, and be present. Maria Menounos. Queen. Queen. <laughs> dropping the ball on the quote of the day I dropped today. The, you know what's so funny? I actually didn't give it to you because you haven't been doing some of them recently. So I'm like, maybe she doesn't want the quote of the day. We and always then, start with the quote of the day. Well, there was like a couple that you didn't do. So then I was like, uh, maybe she hates them. Mm-hmm, perhaps. <laughs> that was my bad. I think uh, okay. So no quote of the day, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the quote of the day. It's what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to be talking about how to be more loving to yourself, how to go hard, but also how to, how to find the ways to be okay with not going hard. We're going to talk a little investing, health stalls, and what to do when your health program is stalling, and um, and also kind of how to delegate better. So these are kind of my topics I was thinking about because this is what I've been going through in the last few weeks. So if you've heard the show, you know that I've been going really hard, and actually I've been going really hard since the end of last year wiping out all the closets, cleaning everything out, getting rid of everything. If you go into all of my closets now, you will find very little in them. My linen closet has towels and stuff and some candles. My other closets are very sparse and I'm so excited by that. You know, we we fill everything up and we just keep pack ratting. We store everything. Oh, maybe I'll use this someday. Maybe I'll use this someday. You know, my inspiration for not having too much is no tell i haven't heard you talk about this Derek huff mm. so when we were dancing on dancing with the stars i saw his place and i saw how he reacted when he got things in the mail he literally if he didn't like it didn't want to use it goodbye there was no holding on to trinkets or anything like that so um so he's always in the back of my head because i just remember that or like even, and I'm dropping all the celebrities now, like Vin Diesel, I would go to his house. There was just sparseness because these are creative people who want to do great things and they don't want to be held down by stuff. And so, you know, I've said it a million times, but any successful person I've encountered, that's how they all live. That's how their houses are, their cars, whatever it is. When you watch the Kardashians, Maria, nothing there's nothing i remember that first time when kim redid her house and everyone was like why you literally there's a sink and that was it and everyone mm-hmm. was freaking out but it makes sense yeah as she and they have gotten more successful they've dumped more and more because you just know what a distraction it is so if you've been listening i've been wiping out everything cleaning out everything I had one last kind of hoorah in my one guest room and i finally wiped it all out and I'm so happy. And now I have systems in place so I can have like a, a giveaway, a donation, a sell. And then the second those bins get filled, you know, we're out. They go. They get picked up or delivered or whatever. And and really, I was ruthless this last week. I was like, if I don't love it, which is kind of what Marie Kondo says, right? If it doesn't give you joy, bring you joy in a different way. Spark joy. It doesn't spark joy. Like there are certain things that I just like kind of wear out of guilt sometimes. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm like, oh, it's a really nice piece. I should wear it. So I wear it, but I don't want to wear it. And so goodbye, all of it. Um, So that was like last weekend, Kevin and I went really, really hard. This weekend, I was like, I'm going to be loving to myself. I am going to allow myself to be lazy. And that despite the list of things I want to accomplish this weekend, this year. So I said, I'm going to allow myself to be lazy. 
I got up lazy. I made breakfast lazy. <laughs> my version of that is not showering and not getting out of my PJs. Um, I did some long baths. I did meditations that were longer. I got a massage and I allowed myself to have a real recharge weekend. And I really think it's important for us to find that balance. Now, listen, guys, I don't have kids, so I cannot begin to understand how difficult it is to recharge when you have kids. I, I, I hope I get to know the feeling in a weird way, <laughs> but it's really, really hard. And so my solution for that would be if you have a partner, um, you know, you guys have to figure out amongst yourselves, you know, splitting that time. You got them today. I'll get them tomorrow. I need my day today and, and find your retreat, find your, happy place. If it's a room in the house that you can just pop a candle on, throw some headphones on, watch some TV or whatever it is, go to the gym, whatever you can do, go outside into nature, go to a park, go see a friend for lunch, whatever is going to give you joy and give you that recharge. Because sometimes it's friends. Sometimes you do I've had so many moments where I've been really sad and I didn't know why. And Kevin's like, you need to go see your friends. And I'm like, oh, that's right. You know, we can get so busy and so in our, you know, thing, whatever it is. And so that's what I will do at some point with Kevin. And I know I'm blessed to have a good partner who is sensitive to that. Um, But it's really, really important for us to recharge because we can't run on empty, right? The car isn't going to go if there's no gasoline in it. Um, so you have to recharge. You got to fill up. And it's not easy for kind of type A overachievers. Thank God I was blessed with a brain tumor <laughs> and I learned a lot of lessons and I learned how to kind of temper myself a little bit and and realize that nothing is worth getting another brain tumor. So I've got to change my ways and I've got to change my life and I need to um, rest and recharge. I need to spend quality time with people who fill me up and uh, who see me. In fact, it's funny. I'm literally looking at this uh, mouse pad that I made for myself after surgery. And it says, breathe, remember to be still today, temper expectations of others focus on my emotional, spiritual, and physical health, which I've done. What three things am I grateful for today? Life is happening for me, not to me. Live my purpose. Use my gifts to help others. Be present. Nothing is worth another brain tumor. And spend more quality time with people who see me and fill me up. That was the mouse pad I made for myself after brain surgery. And I try to live by that and do that every day. And so, yeah, that was, that was my, my past weekend. I forgot to tell you guys about my other, or maybe not forgot, but I didn't get to tell you about a fun thing that we did. So I did implement Maria, date nights. Before you jump to this, I actually want to ask you a question. Cause I yeah. think that this could be a good um, topic for a lot of people. Cause I actually mm-hmm. literally talked about this in therapy the other day of when we do get those recharge times, like for example, Saturday night, I didn't, I purposely didn't do anything. I didn't plan anything, but then I rolled calls for like, like I couldn't actually sit and be still with myself. Mm. And so I was talking about it in therapy because I realized that I'm like, I do that to myself all the time. I crave a night or a day. And then I'll just like, avoid actually having the day to myself by doing everything else. And mm-hmm. I was like, and then I'm like mad at myself. So it's this, it, it just, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's, it was like kind of this aha moment for me, for me. And I feel like a lot of people do that. Um, so curious if you've done that and if there's anything that you've done to remedy that. Yeah, it's not easy. Right. So even I was taking my bath the other day and I realized, wow, I actually just keep doing things on my phone while I'm in the bath. And the whole point Mm -hmm. is to just disconnect. So we're all going to do that. But at least step one is I was in the bath, right? Right. And you did stay in and 
um, hopefully those calls were productive. Like I yesterday woke up and Kevin was watching TV in the kitchen and I just sat on my iPad and I got ahead on some work, but very casually at my right. pace and whatever I wanted to answer and whatever I wanted to get off my plate. So it's, it's, it doesn't have to be that you're just doing nothing. Mm. Um, you know, there's, there's also, you know, I, I did become aware of it and put my phone down and said, wait, uh, maybe your hands should be in this Epsom salt bath too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's changing your patterns and your behaviors. And I'm going to talk about that with everything today, because I'm remembering that in Dr. Joe's work, that is what yields you the new results. You can't keep doing the same things and expect different results. We all know that now, but we don't really apply it in our lives. So for me, I am really trying to be aware of changing patterns and behaviors. So normally I would have just continued to go hard around my house this weekend. There is one last little section I need to clear out. It's these two little um, cabinets under my bookshelves in my living room. That's kind of the last stand, but that's like a 30 minute job. So I'm not worried about it. Um, but there were so many moments where I had the impulse to just go get it done. It's like, no, this is not the weekend for that. I'm not doing that this weekend. I'm really going to just allow my body to have time to rest and recharge. So you have to listen, you're 28, 29, mm -hmm. 28, yeah. 28. Okay. At 28, I was moving at lightning speed. <laughs> so you have to understand that the journey is still the journey. You're yeah. still learning. You're still and you're so ahead mm -hmm. on the journey, right? Because you're already paying attention to this stuff, but and even if you're 40 and you're just waking up, like, you know, I woke up in my late thirties, um, because I had to, um, you know, you're going to have to start becoming aware of these patterns and then seeing how you can make changes. So mm -hmm. you, maybe you'll catch yourself next time you're rolling calls and say, no, this isn't what I want to do. Right. I want to have just some soft music on and I want to journal or I want to, see how long I can stand not having a conversation with somebody mm -hmm. I and like get that. comfy with that. I remember John Edward last summer told me in the middle of crisis was like, you need to get comfortable with being alone because you have a lonely path ahead. And I was like, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I listened and I've gotten really comfortable with being alone and having my alone time. I'd already begin, been getting comfortable with that. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's changing those little, little patterns and behaviors. So, um, you know, I think even Kevin and I, I implemented date nights on Friday nights. I said, Kevin, we go so hard and time just flies. Like we need to have our own time too. So I said, Friday nights, no negotiating is our night. And we're going to do date nights. So we went to Joe Gatto's uh, comedy show at, uh, he did, um, he started doing stand up. He used to be part of the impractical jokers group. If you guys don't know on true TV, I have been obsessed with them, obsessed with the show. I've been on the show. I love them. It's about four friends who compete to try to embarrass each other. And it's the best show. It's so fun. And so he, Left the group is, you know, on his own doing stand up, killing it. He had two great acts with him. So he had um, this guy named Jiggly, who uh, is from Boston. He was really funny. And then he had Steve Byrne. I just had to pull up his um, podcast. So Steve Byrne and Joe Gatto have a podcast called Two Cool Moms. <laughs> and what a they give, name. <laughs> they give advice. As uh, Mr. Moms, it's really funny. Um, I haven't listened to it, but they're really funny. And Steve was just off the charts funny as well as Joe. So I said to Joe, you put on a great show because everyone before you was amazing as well. So we laughed all night. We saw um, Paula Abdul there, who literally looks like she's 30 and is like just the sweetest, warmest person. I used to work with her at Entertainment Tonight. 
and I love her. So it was really nice to see her. And Kevin and I had fun on our date night, which was really cool. New patterns, new behaviors. And I love that you, I like the non, like it's a non-negotiable too, because that it's funny. Shout out to Pooji Pooj, our, um, former Heel Squad (laughs) co-host. Our, exactly. Heel Squad alum. Um, we've implemented little Sunday hangs because we never get to see each other. And I'm like, we became so close. She's like my sister. Like I talked to her about everything and vice versa. So two weekends in a row now, we're like, it's non-negotiable. Even if we're doing errands with one another, like we have to see each other. And it's been so nice. And I it's like, like that. yeah, it's been great because when it, when you make it, like I hate so often you will, you'll say something and then you don't follow through. Right. It's like, Every Sunday we're going to do this and then it never happens. So I'm like, no, we knew, like you said, Maria, new habits, new patterns. Like we are doing this. So I'm proud of us. We've now two weekends in a row. It's been lovely. Yeah. And then again, afford some empathy if if something happens, something happens or you're just wiped out or whatever. You don't want to do things despite, like if Kevin and I are just drop dead exhausted, we're not going to force date night. Right. Maybe we'll modify it date night in bed. (laughs) But I love that. (laughs) Watching Netflix. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think those are some, some really cool things, even, um, health stalls. So I'll tell you, um, I, you guys know, I've been going so hard on this health journey, especially since the summer. And I feel like I keep getting rewards and rewards and rewards, and then that gets exciting and it builds and it builds. And now it's kind of like, ooh, is this a plateau or am I just tired, you know, of having to, you know, do all the right things. Um, And I had like a little, you know, setback recently or not like a setback, but like a, a PTSD moment where I wasn't feeling well and I got really scared that I was regressing. And I literally, I mean, my heart sank into my, you know ankle. And I was really, really scared. And I had to obviously honor the feelings of being scared while trying to remember that everything's happening for a reason. And, um, and that there are lessons in everything and not the whole journey isn't going to be all sunshine and rainbows. It's not going to be always being rewarded and always having amazing results and all of this stuff. Like there's going to be stuff that happens along the way. It's just how you handle them. How do you choose to respond to what's happening? And so even with my health, I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to the signs. And again, the same application, if you want a new result, you have to make um, new changes. You've got to, if you're in a plateau to get out of the plateau, you got to do something different. And so I realized, okay, maybe I'm realizing like when I go to bed, my stomach's doing all kinds of crazy throbbing and all this stuff. I'm like, maybe I need to switch out and do lighter meals at night or earlier meals. Dr. Allison was like, I'm so glad you're finally there. Cause I said, Hey, I think the next step in my healing is, is lighter meals and not eating, you know, after five o'clock or even earlier, like my lunch is my dinner kind of thing. And she was like, I'm so glad you got there. Um, I've been hoping that you'd want to do this. And she said in the winter months, she stops eating at three o'clock because wow. yeah. Cause it gets darker earlier. So the body's building melatonin earlier to go to sleep. So I have been eating my big meals at like one or two o'clock. And then at night, like last night I had, um, I have these like little cucumber, like you chop the cucumbers into kind of bigger circles. And then you, you dig out the inside and you put in a little, um, chop locks with red onion and a little like mayo And so I was like, that's light. Um, Or I had chia pudding the other night with some walnuts, just like a little something at like five o'clock. And I've been noticing a difference. 
and my stomach isn't, you know, trying to digest this massive steak. I used to eat like this massive steak every Friday night. And I didn't know why my stomach was just going crazy yeah. all night. So soups too, Maria. I, I do a lot of yeah. soups at night. That's like a great I, idea. And it's, it's therapy. They're therapeutic to make. So I'll do it on like a Saturday or Sunday. And then that's always my dinner because it's like, they're nice. They're light, veggie heavy, like easy digestive. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I, I love like that. that. I think, you know, so new, new choices lead to new results. And so that's kind of when you plateau in anything, that's when you have to start thinking about that, whatever it is in life. Right. Um, so I'll tell you, I, I also have to remind myself of certain things and, one of them is what Deborah Silverman taught me when she was here, which is I'm a healer and I can heal anything that comes my way. I know I'm guided and protected. And, you know, when, when things get hard, I understand that it's never going to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy or everybody would do it, but it's those who hang on and hang in when it does get tough that do yield <clears throat> the rewards. And so I've also in those moments when things are rickety, when you're not feeling good and you're rickety and like, you don't know what's wrong. It's when you're out of alignment with who you are and who you want to be. So when I'm not feeling right, that's when I lean into my meditations deeper. That's when I lean into my routines and I really start to get back into a routine because that kind of helps me get on track, right? Like she said on the show a million times, if she didn't stick religiously by her routines, she'd be not okay too. So all the, the great gurus and spiritual, you know, teachers always say this. So when things are getting tough, that's what I do. Also, interestingly enough, that day I was having, that was really, really rough. And I had to have an IV come to the house and the whole thing. My brother texted me just out of nowhere, Bobby McFerrin's don't worry, be happy. And you know what? I'm going to play the first few like drops of it because you got to listen to the words at the top of it that I never, you know, would have paid attention to until this moment, but listen to this. This is so cool. Here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it note for note. Don't worry. Be happy. In every life we have some trouble. But when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry. Whenever in life we have some trouble, when we worry, we make it double. Are you kidding me? All I was doing was worrying in that moment. And he sends me this and he's, I mean, listen, my mom was pretty psychic. I have that. He has it too. And he's like, yeah, I was just feeling something. And Kevin was like, that's your mom talking to you. So that was like a really beautiful moment for me to say, okay, I'm going to make a double with the worries. Thank you, Bobby McFerrin. I'm going to stop worrying and start remembering that I can handle anything that comes my way and that I, I am healing myself and have had incredible results so far and I know I can do it. And so you just have to keep getting yourself back. It's like you're digging yourself out of the hole. Um, and, and that was uh that was a nice little message that I got from above for sure. And what just a good reminder, I need to write that down that like when you worry, it doubles because it's so freaking true. Mm -hmm. it's and you're so worrying true. about stuff you don't even know. Like everything I'm worrying about, am I regressing? Is it over? Is the healing over? Like, it's the catastrophizing. You're, it's not 100% true as Dr. Yeah. Eamon taught us on the show. Is mm -hmm. it 100% true? If it's not, stop thinking about it. Right. So that Dr. Eamon lesson has really stuck with me too. Um, but you know, when you're in the moment, you need some reminder, you need that lifeline to come through that person, that friend, 
whoever it is to help you because it's so easy to have your thoughts just kind of run away and your fears just completely take over. Yeah. That made me cry when you showed me that. I was just like, Oh my gosh. I feel like the start, the start of the year. What are the, like, what are the odds that song, that person in that moment. Mm -hmm. But I really do believe it was your mom. And I really do believe in the universe in those, in those scenarios too. I think like when we're moving so fast, going back to what you were talking about in the beginning, right? It's like when you're moving so fast, you miss all those signs and you miss all those things and you don't get like, they can't even soak in. Mm -hmm. So like, no, you weren't having a great day. It was really bad, but you were down and sitting down and like you were able to kind of receive that. It was just, yeah, it, it was also wild. So that, yeah, it was good for me to hear too. I was like, dang. <laughs> When I heard those lyrics, I was like, oh, yeah. oh my God. Or even just when I saw Don't Worry, Be Happy pop up on my text in the right. middle of a really bad moment. Um, you know, you're you're now in some in a in a low vibration. And as Esther Hicks has taught me, your best move is to find that next good feeling thought. When you're in that bad place, what's the next best thought you can reach for? How can you get there? I get there with my dogs. I'll start playing with the dogs. I'll go outside in nature. You have to remember however you can, whether it's a note card on your fridge, that when you are in those bad moments, you need the recipe to get out. And the way to get out is to find the next best feeling thought and then build on that and then build on that and then build on that and crawl out of that hole of desperation, of fear, and realizing that when you worry, it only doubles and that nothing good comes from fear unless you're facing a lion and then that's good because you're going to (laughs) run. If that's the appropriate thing to do with a lion, I don't know. Um, Sounds right to me. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's really the (laughs) best thing I could think of in that moment. But, um, you know, and speaking of fear, I was just telling Kelsey that uh, this year I'm going to really change those patterns as well. I don't want to live in fear. I've lived in fear my whole life in so many ways, whether it was... Uh, emotionally, financially. So I, um, I was saying to Kevin, listen, we're going to make these decisions together because I'm not making these alone, but I want to start making investments and, and not worry about all the things that could happen. Um, I'm going to make smart moves, the smartest that I know I can make with the smartest people that I know make them. And And hopefully um, those new choices to to not lead with fear and just always worry and have, you know, the first dime I ever save, like just keep it in the bank and save it and don't be afraid. Um, I'm going to make some moves and I'm going to change those patterns and behaviors. And like I said, I'm going to make the best moves I can, but I'm also having to get okay with, I could be wrong. I could make a mistake. God forbid Miss Perfect makes a mistake, right? We have such perfectionism syndromes, so many of us, and it really prevents you from living, right? Perfectionism is literally a recipe for living in like purgatory. You have to make moves. You have to take chances in life to, again, yield a different result. And so even with that, I'm, I'm making moves. I was like telling my dad, he's like, good, I'm proud of you. I'm like, okay, if I have to come live with you, you'll know why. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Although I might go live with him anyway, because I love living there. Yeah, but, there you go. Um, but I don't want to live from fear anymore. I don't want to make moves from fear. I want to make calculated, smart decisions. And, and, you know, you don't, there's no risk no reward without risk. You got to have a little risk to get a reward. Um, so that's kind of where I'm putting my focus into now as well. And also another area I'm putting my focus on is, and, and it's funny, Kelsey, I think I saw, or Kevin said something 
that you, your therapist said recently, this might tie in, but for me, it's, I'm trying to see where my time sucks are and what I can take off my plate, what I can delegate um, and getting really good at delegating because we get so in the weeds. And if you're trying to build something, you can't be in the weeds doing, you know, that kind of work. You've got to delegate it. You've got to find a way to make things easier. Again, stupid thing. I sent a lot of flowers. I'm going to the flower factory this week and I'm giving them my credit card to keep on file. I took good photos on my phone of floral arrangements I love. And I'm just going to say, here's the address, send them. Done. Here's the person. Done. I'm not going to have to go on the website, do the whole thing, fill out the forms. No, I'm going to, I'm going to go to them and say, do you want my business? I'm going to email you. This is the person. This is the card. Go. Boom. Like I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I can farm out so that I can focus on my dreams and my goals and the things that really need my attention. I don't want to be doing things that other people around me can do. Um, and, and everything is possible. There are people to do everything. There are consignment shops that will come to you and pick up clothes because they want that business to go sell your items. So call up and ask them, Hey, can we set up a bi-monthly or a monthly pickup so that anything that comes into this house that I don't want or don't want to use anymore can go out of the house. Um, I love that. I think Maria, this even ties back to, and I know with me in my mind, the fear and perfectionism thing too, because sometimes when you're initially delegating, it's going to be harder, right? So sometimes even like I know with my interns, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll just do it. I'll just do it because I'm worried that it's not going to get done well, or I'm going to have to fix it or this or that. And like, I would say in the last, that was how I thought really when I started with them in the last year or so, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have to put more effort in and more time in initially to train them, to train them. And then it will pay off, you know? And so I think like, even with these things, right. It's always like, Oh no, like someone could mess it up. Like they might get the flower wrong or this or that. So you're like, I'll just do it. But then it sucks. It takes away from you so mm-hmm. much. So I really like a training that. guide for them. Do you have, um, yes. what's that video thing that we use? I forget. It's not Trello. I can't remember now off the top of my head. Loop. Loom. 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 <laughs> Loom. 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 Yeah. Loom. Loom. So I, yeah, yeah. It's like Loom is a really great training tool, friends. Right. We really, really love Loom here. We come up with Loom videos for Loom. everything. I actually wonder, Carolina, coming in to the team, did the Loom videos help you do your job? So much. There were so many times where I was like, oh, I have this little silly question. I was like, wait, let me check the Looms. Looms answered it Shout out Loom. immediately. And I still so, reference some of them like frequently. So I'm so glad. Fan. So it's amazing. We record looms. Mm -hmm. Everybody for their position records looms and says, this is how we handle our social media. This is how we handle the research for the show. This is how we handle this. So it's a video where you can speak it, show it, example it, the whole thing. And anybody who has a business should be using this because you constantly have the team updated. And Carolina, now you know your job is to update these looms and then play them back for me and Kelsey to say, does this make sense? So you have to have people check it because a lot of the times, like when Elaine was doing them, I would check them and be like, Elaine, I still don't understand what you mean here. Clarify this, clarify this, clarify that. And then, and then now if Carolina got sick, decided to say, peace out. We hate you. <laughs> Whatever it is oh, no. you have the <laughs> that explains everything, but really it's for that next person who comes in to understand what they're doing and how to do it and not have to bother Kelsey or me. It's self-sufficient. And that's why, by the way, you're amazing. Cause you were actually thought unlike a lot of people, you actually thought, let me go check the loom first before I bother Kelsey and take her and distract her for something that might already be there for me. A hundred percent. It's all there too. So it's great. So, so shout out to the loom. loom. So you're shout right. So I need to do, cause I have some of our videos saved like for my Pinterest team and TikTok and stuff, but I need to put them in loom and send them to them. 
But yeah. it is something I've I've learned. So I think, Maria, you're so spot on. And I think what you were probably talking about, you saw is shout out to Russell, my acupuncturist, who talked about, is it a drain, distraction, or resource? Oh, yes. Explain this, because Kevin was telling me about this. This this literally blew my mind. So I was telling him, I was like, I just feel like I'm I'm wanting to shed not necessarily like people, but it's like, I'm still saying yes to things that don't feel right or like going out with people who don't feel right. And he was like, listen, I want you, cause I'm such a resp or I'm such a reactor. I don't respond. So he's like, I want you to take a beat when someone offers you something or like, you're going to go out with someone and think, is this either a drain, a, a resource or a distraction? And he was like, I want zero to no drains distractions, not always bad, like a little bit of distraction here or there, but he was like, it should be like 70% resource where it's like, it feels good to you. It lights you up. You're getting purpose from it, whatever. And 30% can be a distraction. So I really am now like viewing things and friendships and stuff that way. And it's been helping a lot. So thank you, Russell. And I think that that's like, we can look at really everything through those, like that lens. But how do you separate like hanging out with a friend as a distraction or a resource? Like what makes it different? So great question. That is a good question. I have, you know, the friendships that like you feel you're, you leave and you feel so good and you're like, <laughs> you feel like you got something out of it. It could just even be a good feeling. It doesn't need to be like a, we, we made a business plan and we're going to go take on the world. But like you feel good after I know those friendships that are like, I have my party friends. That's mm -hmm. a distraction you go out and you're drinking and partying. Like that's a distraction from your life. Or my friends who I'm like, come over, we're going to pull some tarot cards and talk about our life. Like that fills me up. So that's how I view it. It's like, that's a resource versus a distraction. I like that. It, it's helped me a lot. I mean, it's been a week, but <laughs> so far it's helped me. Listen, new patterns, new behaviors, mm -hmm. new results. You're going to be so much more alive when you make the decisions that are loving to you and not loving to everybody else. Ooh, and that's the thing yes. that's really, really hard. I'll tell you what's helping me stay on track is my new index cards on my mantle where I pray. And you'd think I would remember it, but I don't. And I have to reach for them every time I have my AM one and my PM one and my PM one says, you know, what am I grateful for? Which I do through my prayers what did I do that was loving to me today? What did I do that was not loving to me today? And that's so important because it reminds you of whether you're on track or off track, where you need to adjust, what you need to like be aware of. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that 20 text exchange with that person and it kept draining me more and more and more. That was very unloving. And I think I need a solution for that in the future. And so then you stop and you think, okay, this is how I'm gonna handle it next time. But if you're not taking daily stock of your life like that, you're not going to be present. You're not going to notice those things. And they're going to keep happening and snowballing and taking and draining. And then the other one is, I think, my body. So I remind myself to think my body. And I think all my organs, all my systems, digestive, endocrine, the whole, the whole thing. Um, and... I think that's it. So, you know, each card basically tells me how I want to end my night. And that really, really helps me. So, um, you know, whatever is going to keep you on track um, and help you is really what you should be doing. So I even have like on my computer here, um, my little notes like resonance and dissonance and remembering like when you're doing something, do I feel Great. Do I feel full of life? Is there a skip in my step? Do I love what I'm doing? Great. If not, I'm in dissonance, right? Are you low energy? Do you feel tension? You feel like you're not, you know, feeling good. You're being protective. That's all dissonance. And then you kind of can make better decisions in your daily life based on those. You know, am I energy rich? Am I neutral? Am I poor? What did I do to get here? What decisions did I make? What choices did I make this weekend to feel so drained today? Um, you know, and then you can make better decisions from there. I, I forgot about that one. That one's with Susie Batiste, right? Mm -hmm. So that's new for you, Carolina. Does that make sense to you? The residents and dissonance? Because I feel like that was another one that kind of goes in with what I was saying that like that like changed my life thing. So thank you for that reminder because I forgot about it. Mm -hmm. No, they're very useful. 
Yeah, we love should it. get Susie back on the show. Yeah, we should. I really, really love Susie. Um, and then, you know, lastly, Friends Studio is coming along. Um, we're really excited to get back in there. We're making it like a really zen healing studio where we'll be able to work out of there and do the show, which is cool. Um, and, you know, that was another like decision this weekend. I, I had ordered some chairs. They came. They were not right. And instead of kind of trying to force it or whatever, I just had the delivery people take them right away. I'm like, nope, they're not right. Take them. So I don't have to deal with sending people to come later, you know, in the week and started putting the APB out for set designers. I'm like, I think I need a little bit of help. I kind of know exactly what I want, but I need a little bit of help. So we started putting out the feelers and then something popped into my head and said, can you just go to world market? down the street and take a look at what they have. And at first I was like, Nope, this is a distraction. This is a waste of my energy and time. I'm going to have a professional come in and help me and I'm going to delegate it. And then I realized I actually wanted the distraction to get up off my chair in my kitchen and away from my iPad. I wanted to go out and have lunch. And so I was like, no, this is actually what I need and this is what I'm going to do. And it's not going to be a drain. And Kevin was excited to go too. So I was like, okay, let's go. And of course we found everything we needed. (laughs) The chairs are not available till early February. So we have to wait a minute till they come back in stock. But once those suckers are in stock, I am taking them and we are going to be that much closer. Now, the last part is the wall. I want like a wall of greenery. And so I am going to try to order on my own on Etsy what I want, see if it works. If it works, we'll install it. We'll get our little sign, Carolina, which I'm adjusting. I think I want to do the neon one instead. Um, As I've sat with the Heel Squad sign, the wooden one with the light behind, it already bores me. But the neon one, I think, is going to make me feel good. It lights me up, ironically. (laughs) The neon sign lights me up. So um, so I think we're going to do that. And so I think, uh, you know, really sitting with things sometimes and saying, okay, maybe this this isn't something that's going to really, like, drain me. Just, like, feeling into your feelings and just listening to yourself is so important. But the studio's coming along. We are using healing lights, which is so cool. We'll tell you all about that when we, um, when we launch and, uh, and we're just excited. It's going to be a fun, a fun studio to work out of. And we have a lot of really exciting things this year that we want to build. So I'm really glad I got a nice weekend of rest so that I can now hit the pavement a little harder this week. I love it. That's the best thing about when you recharge, then it's like, you're ready to go. You're ready to jump back into it. Yeah. I'm very excited about the studio and. 2023. I'm ready, girls. Let's do it. Let's Let's do do it. it. All right, friends. Well, that is it for us today. Uh, If you have not given us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please do. It really helps us in so many ways. It helps our morale. We work really, really hard on this. The team works super duper hard and those reviews really light us up. So if you take a second, Um, go down into the summary of this episode, click on the link to leave a review. That would be wonderful. Um, And in the meantime, be nice people, make good choices and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menounos or mariamenounos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.